Thank you so much, the Honorable uh, Agaba Abbas, Your Excellency, the Ambassador to the Moroccan Government. Allow me ride on the already established protocol. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am delighted to be in KIU this afternoon. I don't know why I am particularly excited. I almost didn't make it here. But I thought to myself, and I said I would have done the country a disservice if I didn't appear before you today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I guess apart from the greeting and saying shukran, my Arabic needs some more lessons that I should be able to take away from here today. I want to start by appreciating you. I was so pleased when I walked in and I found a room full of young people, young people that are hungry for knowledge and are looking towards the development of this country. When I stand to speak passionately today about the Afro-Arab Youth Council, it comes from a background of hope. Some of us today are where we are and are still going further steps because of platforms like this. I am the National Youth Representative in the 11th Parliament, and we have a platform called the Parliamentary Forum on Youth Affairs. The Afro-Arab Youth Council is one of our sister partners. S platforms like these are usually not something that you take for granted. Because you can imagine out of the millions of young people that we have in Uganda, you are among the chosen few that have the privilege to be in this room today, to have free connections, to access free knowledge, the right information, that you are in position to transcend to other young people that are out there. Ladies and gentlemen, it might look like as if you are just seated in a room here today, but you're actually in a life-changing opportunity. And I want to urge all of you that this is something you should not take for granted. And I want to thank the Afro-Arab Youth Council for being very intentional and deliberate about what exactly they want to change about the youth of Uganda today. Young people ask, people keep saying, how do you work with the young people? Young people are so complicated. They do not know what they want. It is not easy to fulfill their interests. But on the contrary, I think it is not like that. It is just that they do not give us enough engagement to be in the core involvement of issues. And when I find a platform like this that engages young people from the word go on the beginning of any agenda, then I know that we are taking the right step in the right direction. Afro-Arab Youth Council reaches out this particular year to make 19 years. 19 whole years of just making youth livelihood better and better. Why wouldn't we clap for that? 19 years ago, I was, I must have been in primary school. Now that I'm thinking about it mathematically, and here I am today benefiting from the same platform. Uganda is one of those countries that has the youngest population in Africa. Someone once said that if you want to, divide, to define Uganda, just say Uganda is young. And when I stand here to see that we are all gathered to centralize ourselves on one theme, healthy young people, a wealthy nation. Uganda having 75% of its population being young simply means that the wealth of this nation lies with the young people. But there's no way we are going to make a wealthy nation if the young people of today are not productive. And how are you going to be productive if you're not healthy? One of the greatest challenges we are having currently among the youth are matters of sexual reproductive health. And I was very excited when 
I got the information that one of the plans the Afro-Arab Youth Council had was to have a medical camp. Just have doctors around where young people can freely access them, where they can have access to good um, health care, where they can ask and have answers to all their sexual reproductive health questions, and just have clarity on all matters. Because in a digital era as ours, you have a lot of information going around, left, right, and center. Most of it is misinformation. And being young comes with a lot of energy and curiosity. You want to experiment this. You want to try out that. Your friend told you that. You saw this is cool on social media. All of a sudden, you are caught in a trap that you cannot get yourself out of. Before you know it, your health is affected. Your mind is drained. And you cannot just focus to be productive for this country. That is how bad it is. I hope everyone that is here is at university level already. I do not know if we had the opportunity to invite those that are not yet. But averagely, over 100 girls are dropping out of school every day in Uganda due to sexual reproductive health related matters. Just simple matters of misinformation that somebody can stand up and say, if you had sex for the first time and you're a virgin, you cannot get pregnant. And then the poor girl gets pregnant. That somebody can say, you, you know when someone has HIV and they are taking their drugs and you sleep with them, you cannot get infected. And then university girls and boys are getting infected on a daily basis. And very many other matters that are going on. So as young people, what is your stake? What is your agenda? and the vision that you drive as a citizen of this country. It is your right, first of all, to have the right information, but it is also your responsibility to ensure that you, rel you relay the same right information to another. And matters of youth livelihood are not issues that are going to be solved by legislation. It is a matter of behavior, how you relate in society, and how your mannerism interacts with, an, with another. And that is something that we reach out to you as leaders and say, as young people, can we take charge of our health? Can you be at the helm of advocating for healthy young people in this nation? So that when we sit down to talk about development, we know that we are talking with totally focused and sane minds, not someone who is worried about taking their medicine the next hour. And that is, not me, that is not to come out in any offensive manner. If you are in a situation where you can avoid being unhealthy tomorrow, please take the right decision. I want to encourage each and every one of you that is in this room today, leader or not, in your own capacity, it is the time for us as the young people of this country to prepare for the future. The future of this country lies in our hands, and the future is today. The future is already mature. There is, no, there is not going to be any other day that the future will come to you and say, are you ready now? It should find you ready. It should find you focused on the right path. And because of that, as a youth leader at the national level, I cannot thank his Excellency the President enough for all the support that he's giving the young people of this country. For the support that government, for the support that government of Uganda is offering to the Afro-Arab Youth Council, for all the planned activities that they have in place. They are about to establish their own independent secretariat. They are about to start up a skills center they're about to start a cultural center. And those are some of the gaps that we have in the growing young generation in Uganda today. Just having young people appreciate their heritage, understand their values, to be able to stand and speak from an informed point of view is very important. Because then which generation shall we nurture ourselves if we are not in the right channel? The generation before us, the generation of the Museveni's, of any other person, 
they have done their part. Now it is thrust upon us. And then God brings wingless angels through the Moroccan government that has solidly also stood in support of this agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, let us clap for that. I have not had an opportunity to go in any of the Afro countries, but I am definitely going to do so because I can't wait to just go and blend in and interact and learn many other things from their different culture and their way of things. But the love that they have shown Uganda in driving this vision of the Afro-Arab Youth Council is very pertinent. For them, they might look at it as support. They have no idea how many lives they are going to change. Testimonies in the future of how many young people are going to transform because of this support. And Your Excellency, the Ambassador, we really pray that the good Lord, Allah, blesses you with many years. Take this gratitude message to your government. We are very grateful. <laughs> Lastly, as I conclude, fellow young people, I want, I don't want, I request, I beg you in the deepest of my heart, being a young person is not a permanent situation. We all know that it is a form of transition. Today you are young, tomorrow you are not. What counts most is how you utilize your time as a young person. What impact are you creating wherever you are in your society? I believe that we all have the ability to create a difference. It comes from within us. It is not just left to the leaders. You as a young person that has had the opportunity to come to university, that has had the exposure to interact with different minds, each and every one of you wisdom, knowledge and understanding to always make the right decisions with dignity as we all strive for a healthy Uganda. I thank you.